All right, so let's look at break even. Because can you imagine that if you're running a business, oh, by the way, we're in part four, and hopefully the last part. Um, if you're running a business, of course you want to know what you, how many products you need to sell to break even. Of course you do, right? You, you, that's valuable information to have. So the way we figure that, right, revenue and costs are equal. The way we, we calculate that is fixed costs divided by unit contribution margin. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with unit contribution margin, go back a video. All right, so let's look at this first one. Bigelow Inc. sells a product for $1,200. The variable cost is $816, while fixed costs are $3,120. Determine the break even in sales in units. All right, so we go A. Oops. All right, so fixed costs, we know that, 3,120,000 divided by the unit contribution margin. Okay, so unit contribution margin is how much is it for just one? So 1,200 sales price minus 816, the variable costs. And you would wind up with 8,125 units. That's how many you need to sell to break even. Now think about the math on that. That is, you earn whatever this is, let's say 8, 1200 minus 816 is 384. Okay, that's 384. You earn $384 on every sale. So, how many of those do you need to sell in order to cover your fixed costs? You need to sell 8,125 units. All right. So now the next question asks you, what is, what if we increase the price, right? What if we increase the sales price, but there, our variable costs haven't changed? Okay. Now there's going to be a whole slide on this. Don't memorize anything here. Think to yourself, if I increase the sales prices, then I'm going to make more money on everyone, which should mean I should have to sell less to break even, right? So nothing else has changed. I'm just considering sell, changing the sales price. Divided by 1, 2, 3, 2, minus 816. So now I'm not I'm making $416 on every sale. Alright? So if I'm making more money on every sale, I should have to sell less. And if you do the math here, 7,500 units. Which makes sense, right? Every time you're doing one of these, think to yourself, should I be selling more or less? Like what do I expect to come out to be the answer? And that's kind of a double check for yourself. Alright. Taking it a step further on break even. We're not really in business to break even. We're in business to make money, right? That's why you're in this class. You're, learning, you're, you're taking a job that makes you good money, right? You've got to be able to pay for all those Netflix subs subscriptions as the prices keep going up. All right. So target profit. Target profit is a slightly vari a slight variation on what we already just calculated. The idea is that we decide, okay, I want to break even, but I also want to make money. What is my target profit? So now your numerator is fixed costs plus target profit over unit contribution margin. So we really just added this target profit piece. All right, so it's asking, what is the break-even point in units, All right? Ramirez sells a product for $80 per unit, variable cost is $60, fixed cost of 40. So first they want us to figure out the normal break-even. Well, that's easy enough. We don't have to do that, right? With before the target profit, so this is A. 4,850,000 divided by uh, selling price is $80 and the variable cost is 60, right? So that comes out to be 242.5 units, really 243, right? You can't sell 242.5, but we'll go with it. All right. So that's where we stand now, but that's not what we want. We also want a profit. Oh, I didn't mean to cross that out. I was looking to underline it, but a profit of 500,000. So we're going to change our numerator now. Instead of just $4,850,000 in fixed costs, we also want to make a profit of $500,000, all divided by the unit contribution margin, which didn't change, 80 minus 60. That comes out to be 200, oh, I know why, that's a comma, 242,500 units. Sorry, I'm going to read my own notes. All right, so we would expect that we had to sell more, right, because we're trying to make a profit. That comes out to be 260,500 units. Okay. Which makes sense because 500,000 divided by 20, right? That's the extra unit that you've got here. All right. Let's take it a step further. Not too bad, right? Well, this one gets a little sketchy. What if we're selling more than one thing? Imagine that you're selling more than one thing in your business. So if you're selling more than one thing, you need to do a little bit more math here because we have to look at 
what percentage of your sales are one product, what percentage of your sales are another product. All right, so here we go. We're selling two things, model 94 and model 81, right? Here's our sales prices, here's our variable cost per unit, here's our contribution margin per unit. What we're gonna kinda have to do is we kinda have to pull it together, pull these two products together in order to prepare the calculation. So let's see. So what we do is, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit off on here. All right, sales. I'm gonna set it up this way. Sales, variable costs. Well, we've got two products, 94 and model 81. I don't know why they don't give them something fun as a name, like apples and oranges. I don't know, 94 and 81. Kind of lame, but I'm not the one who makes up the problems. All right, so the sales price for 94, you see here, is 1600 And the sales price for 81 is at that. Oh, nope, that's the wrong thing. Undo. There we go. All right, sales price for 81 is going to be 1000 Too many zeros. That's a zero there. Let's pretend that's a thousand. Variable costs, uh, 960 a unit and 800 a unit. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what percentage of our sales mix is product 94, what percentage is 81? Well, 94 is 25% of our sales mix, meaning 25% of our sales come from this first product and 75% of our sales come from this 81 product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply them times those percentages. So we're going to do 25% and times 25%. Like I said, we're kind of bringing them together. And, oh, I just totally did it. Hang on, sorry. Undo, 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 undo. Product 81 is actually 75%. All right, there we go. So the variable costs, 25% here for product 94 and 75% for 81. All right, so we're gonna do the math on that. That's gonna wind up being 400 here. That's gonna wind up being 750 here. That's gonna wind up being 240, that's four. And that's gonna wind up being 600. So what we're doing, like I said, we're bringing them together. And what your book does is it calls it E. Again, not my decision. What we're going to do is we're going to add it together. We're bringing these together. So we kind of look at the products as one. If this is 25% of my sales mix and this is 75% of my sales mix, I'm going to look at those that way and I'm going to bring them together. So now the total sales of my product E, the combined product, is 1150 And the combined variable costs is 840 That winds up with 310 as the unit contribution margin. All right. So now that we've kind of brought them together, we're going to do our break-even analysis, right? Break-even is fixed costs over unit contribution margin. So our fixed costs are 3,565,000 divided by 310 is my unit contribution margin, which is 11,500 units. Okay, but units of what? That's not very helpful, right? Units of... We have to break it back apart again into my 25 and 25 and 75 percent, right? We have to break that 11,500 into 94 and 81, the products. So we're going to multiply that 11,500 times 25 percent, and we find out that we need 2,875 of number 94, and we need 8,625 of product 81 in order to break even. Okay, so that one is a little bit funky, I know. Um, that's one of our last major math things in here. I just want to kind of wrap up the chapter, and I'm going to give you a hint for one of the major homework problems. I'm going to give you a hint on the sticking point for, for what I've seen students have. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to have that one in there. Let's get that out of there. There we go. Okay. Getting there, getting there. There we go. All right. I told you before that I have a sl that there was a slide on it, but I really want you to think through these things. And this is something I took directly from the book. I want you to think about what the changes on certain things would be on break even. Let's say our fixed costs went up. Okay, that means we would have to sell more products in order to break even, right? So if fixed costs go up, then break even goes up. Same thing in the reverse. What if our costs, let's go with our costs, decrease. What if our costs decrease, our variable costs, right? So the cost of making a product is now cheaper. 
right? That means I would make more money on every sale, which means my break even will go down. Okay, so there's not like, I don't want you to memorize these. I want you to think through them. If my selling price went down, right, I had to lower it maybe to meet competition. That means, but my costs have stayed the same. Well, that means I'm going to have to sell more in order to break even because I won't be making as much money on each one. Okay, so think them through. Don't memorize them. All right, this is the problem that students tend to have a sticking point on. So I just wanted to get you started on it, and then that's it. We're done with this chapter. Well, I'm done with this chapter. You guys still have homework to do. All right. So what it's asking you in this problem, this is a break even um, under present and proposed conditions. And what they tell you is they, they tell you the variable and fixed components of each. So this is your standard, right, uh, income statement, your normal absorption income statement. And the thing is, is we've got cost of goods sold, and some of that number is going to be fixed, and some of it's going to be variable. So in order to do this problem, you have to break it into those two pieces. So the way I start my students in the classroom is I start them off like this, variable and fixed. All right. So if we know, they tell you down here, 70% of the cost of goods sold is variable. That means 70% of this number is going to be variable and 30% is going to be fixed. So we're going to multiply that by 25 million to get the variable and fixed pieces. The same thing's going to happen with selling and administrative, but the percentages are different. Selling, they say 75% is variable. So we're going to take 4 million there times 75% to get the variable piece and 25% for the fixed and then administrative is 50-50. Okay, so you have to multiply these things across to get your total variable costs and to get your total fixed costs, right? Total variable costs and total fixed costs. That's the sticking point. Once you have those, you can do all the rest of it. Um, the idea is we're deciding whether or not we're gonna expand operations. Um, they give us the basic information and then what happens if we expand. All right, and from there, you can do the rest of the work. Have a great day, everyone.